Returning to the World by James Ishmael Ford. As we attempt to walk responsibly on this planet, we need perspective. If we hope to make a difference, we need a place from which to act. What are the Buddhist insights that can make our lives deeper and more productive? The point is to return. To find our depth is to return to daily life. We wander the world to find that wisdom is always here. It's always right at home. This is the secret of the Zen way. We sit quietly or walk quietly. We visit with a friend. To sit on a hillside with the rivers and the earth and the grasses and the trees and enjoy that full round moon shining overhead is the fullness of Zen and indeed the fullness of our humanity. The point of Zen is this, emptying. And out of that emptying, returning, returning home, our personal identities are exactly identical with the great emptiness. We must learn this truth with our bodies and with our minds, complete. To find genuinely open hands, we must come to know ourselves. There is a great tip to say to this returning with open hands. When we truly attend, we may discover some of how it can be done profitably. The way of intimacy is a way of respect and beauty and grace. All I want to do is to remind you, my friend, of the beauty and grace of this moment. This is home. This very place is where we find wisdom. This moment reveals what needs to be done and what can be left alone. Whatever traditions we claim, whatever religion we embrace, this moment shows its truth. This right here and now moment is the great play of existence of life and death, of all that was and is and shall be. This very moment is both the doorway to heaven and heaven itself. Our teachers and friends who have walked the way before stand at the door beckoning to us. They give us a broad wink, a crooked finger wiggles at us, beckoning us, welcoming us, all we need to do is step through. I'd like to share with you a really, I think, beautiful resetting of Psalm 23, titled, For This Moment, by Kevin Tarsa. May I remember in this tender moment that love is my guide, always shepherding me toward ways of openness and compassion. I have what I need, really, with love at my side, above me, below me, in front of me, behind me, inside every cell of me, love infused everywhere. Just when the weight of the world I inhabit threatens to drop me in place and press my hope down into the ground beneath me, Love invites me to rest for a gentle while and leads the center of my soul to the quiet, still, restoring waters nearby that somehow I had not noticed. And so, love quietly sets me once again on its tender and demanding path. Even when the walls of hope around me and the cries of death echo through untold corners, Gripping my heart with fear and sadness, I know, I know all will be well, that I will be well. And when love whispers near to me, glints at the corner of my eye, rests with gentle and persistent invitation upon my shoulders. Yes, love blesses me even as the sources and symbols of my pain look on. Love blesses me from its infinite well, and I turn and notice that goodness and kindness and grace follow me everywhere, everywhere I go. 
I live in a house of love, love that will not let me go. I live in a house of love and always will. If there are no clouds, why should I be alive? How can a river take our own life? That night, the river had the opportunity to go back to herself for the first time. She had been running for so long after something outside of herself that she had never seen herself. That night was the first opportunity for her to hear her own crying, the sounds of water crashing against the banks of the river. Because she was able to listen to her own voice, she discovered something quite important. She realized that what she had been looking for was already in herself. She found, she found out that clouds were nothing but water. Clouds are born from water and will return to water, and she found out that she herself was water. The next morning, when the sun was in the sky, she discovered something beautiful. She saw the blue sky for the first time. She had never noticed it before. She had only been interested in the clouds, and she had missed seeing the sky, which is home of all the, all the clouds. She realized that the immense sky had been within her heart since the very beginning. This great insight brought her peace and happiness. As she saw the vast, wonderful blue sky, she knew that her peace and stability would never be lost again. That afternoon, the clouds returned. But this time, she did not want to possess any of them. She could see the beauty of each cloud, and she was able to welcome all of them. When a cloud came by, she would greet him or her with loving kindness. When the cloud wanted to go away, she would wave him or her happily with loving kindness. She realized that all clouds are her. She didn't have to choose between the clouds and herself. Peace and harmony existed between her and the clouds. That evening, something wonderful happened. When she opened her heart completely to the evening sky, she received the image of the full moon, beautiful, round like a jewel within herself. She had never imagined that she could receive such a beautiful image. There is a beautiful poem in Chinese. The fresh and beautiful moon is traveling in the utmost empty sky. When the mind rivers of living beings are free, that image of the beautiful moon will reflect in each of us. As mentioned, our theme for the month of November here at UCE is Where Do I Find Healing? This morning we have been looking at world religions and philosophies for inspiration. Our next reading is by Durga Nagarajan, but this morning you will hear only a small part of this reading because I have a story that is particularly poignant. As many of you know, I suffered a vocal trauma two years ago, which has left me unable to sing. As a singer, this has been a world-altering experience. After working with a speech pathologist and a voice therapist, my ENT specialist noticed that I was healing unexpectedly well. He couldn't understand why I was recovering so well considering the trauma to my vocal cords but he did give me the green light to begin singing again. So I contacted my vocal coach and began what has become an excruciatingly slow and arduous healing journey. This past Wednesday evening, I headed off to my lesson and found myself in a particularly frustrated and disheartened mood but I reminded myself that my coach is there to assist me in my recovery. Before leaving, my partner Robert said to me three times, please be careful driving. 
Well, I thought I was. But the universe had a different plan for me. As I turned a corner, I succumbed to icy conditions, headed straight into a curb, blowing out both front tires. So much for healing. I managed to turn the car around and decided to park in front of a church that was across the street. I thought that this would be a good landmark for the tow truck when it arrived. I fumbled to find my AMA card and noticed a gentleman approaching the car. Can I help? He said. I explained what had happened and that I was in the process of calling AMA. In his broken English, he explained that he might have an extra spare tire that I could use. How kind, I thought. When he returned, it was obvious that the tire was the wrong size. I thanked him for his help and told him that I was on hold with AMA and that I would just wait until he arrived. That would not do. He struggled to explain that he lived across the street and that I should come into his home while I waited. Where do we go for healing? Upon entering his house, and with my phone still at my ear, I introduced myself. Abdul, in turn, introduced me to his wife and three children. He proceeded to tell me that they have only been in Canada for a year and a half. You see, they are refugees from Syria. While still on hold, I was asked if I wanted something to drink. Water would be fine. That wouldn't do. <laughs> Coffee or tea. At this point, I was connected to a representative with AMA. Details of my location were given and arrangements were made to have my car towed to a specific tire merchant. I chatted with the family for a short while, but not wanting to outstay my welcome, I finished my tea and prepared to leave. How are you getting home? Abdul asked. I explained that I work a few blocks away from their home and that I am quite accustomed to taking the bus. Noticing that he didn't fully understand what I said, his nine-year-old son translated in Arabic. Abdul's come back. That won't do. <laughs> he and his wife donned their winter coats and drove me home. Now here's a man who fled from, war, from a war-torn country with his wife and children carrying only a few suitcases. They arrived to Canada, not able to speak a single word of, it, of English, and yet here they were assisting a total stranger in a foreign land in their time of need. How's that for a reality check? And how incredibly humbling. The next day, I sent an email off to the church where I had parked my car. I told them about my accident and how grateful I was to have had the Syrian refugee family living across the street come to my aid. I concluded by telling them how lucky they were to have such caring neighbors. I'll close with the words by Durga Nagarajan. When we remove all the complexities and impurities within us, what remains? Simplicity and purity. Now if we hold on to this pure and untainted treasure and make it grow, we reach a state where only this purity exists. This becomes our nature, and it oozes out of us. 
then our external world changes. There's no rush, no fight for a cause. Nothing is done which is heavy or complicated. It is not that the world has changed, but we have changed from within. So anything inter external is but a manifestation of, of what is within us. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. It all starts with us, you and me. So in the week ahead, may your eyes and hearts be open to unexpected healing. It may come from a friend, a family member, a puppy, or a perfect stranger. And when it does, may we give thanks. Blessed be. I give you these words by Marietta's. If God is your strength and companion, and prayer the means of centering your thoughts, there is room for you here. If the teachings of the Buddha give you clarity and calm in the midst of human striving, there is room for you here. If Gaia's seasonal rhythms lead you best through the myriad steps of life's great dance, there is room for you here. If the still mysterious capacity and power of the mind stirs your imagination and quickens your pulse, there is room for you here. Rest now beside that spring, wherever it is for you, and let your attention go to the small places inside or out in that great wide world, places or people in need of healing or for which your heart is filled with thanksgiving. Interfaith Benediction by Gary Kowalski Gathered in our varied faiths, we give thanks for the blessings of world community as we share our common dream. Homes and schools where children thrive, neighborhoods that are safe and clean, a city rich in colors and cultures, an economy where no one is expendable, a beloved community where rich and poor alike have access to the opportunity for a dignified and productive life. Churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, where our deepest hope is to be of service to a hurting world. Enable us, as we leave this place, to carry forth this prayer into the coming week, turning our thoughts toward charity, our hearts toward justice, and our hands toward the work of peace. So let it be.